Alright, welcome back everybody to another installment in our Engineer.tf map review series. After a uh, decently long hiatus, we are back and we are ready to produce some quality videos for you guys. Um, so, as you know, my name is Wax, we have Mothership on camera, and for our guest this week we have Yip Yapper, who is currently playing Engineer for Apple. How's it going, Yip Yapper? Hey, pretty good. I haven't used this alias in, like, all of 2017. Oh, nice. Good to see you, uh, busting out the old The name. classic yip yap. There we go. Alright, so, uh, this week we are covering Lakeside, which is going to be played, uh, this coming Monday for, uh, UGC matches. So, whoa, as usual, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do our callouts first, so go ahead and take it away, yip yapper. You want me to do all the callouts? Uh, as many as you feel necessary, and I can do the rest if you want. Uh, for the most part, you don't need too many. Like, once you're in the heat of the battle, then, like, left and right kind of works and stuff like that. But some of the more obvious ones are, like, well, some of the ones you should know are, like, there's spawn here. This is just, just this general area. You don't need to be too specific here. These are tunnels. So if you're in your tunnels, you'd say our tunnels, or their tunnels on the other side, which I'm sure we'll get to once we uh, keep going. This is kind of a contested name. I've heard so many names called for this area, but it seems the one that I hear the most is Dance Floor. But I've heard a lot of other people just say like I usually say top right because I I just go direction I just go directional when I'm like busy trying to do something. And uh, so I think some people call this Disco. I, I'm not sure. It's the, or uh, what other names have you heard of? Um. Uh, this is like a really, I don't know, this, this map always has, every team has something different for it. I've heard this called Battlements, I've heard it called, uh, been called Ruins. Uh, oh, Ruins, Ruins, that's what, that's yeah, what Yeah, yeah, I ruins think Ruins is, is the most popular term for it. I've heard Dance Floor and Ruins a lot. Not really sure what started with Dance Floor, but Sniper is going to play here a lot, so you should watch for that. These are pretty much universally considered bats. It's left and right bats for years, depending on what side, and if you're on the other side, then they would be left and right bats. Snipers like to play on bats and and uh, dance floor like the entire time, so should watch for that. Um, bats is pretty self-explanatory. A lot of people call this ramp, um, and it's pretty close to main, so we'll call that ramp. And going from spawn, you can go to ramp through the left. You can go through tunnels to get to ruins to the right, or you can go through main, which is pretty self-explanatory because it's the main section of the map. Which leads out to the point. This here is obelisk. So, um, some common. Actually, no. You're just talking about call it. So, yeah. So this is obelisk. If you're around here, heavies usually play around here. This is point. And that's the big ammo pack. Uh, this is a pretty important room. So you should know at least what this is called. This is bathhouse, and this is pretty much universally considered bathhouse by like every team. Um, if you need to know. Like only two call, or only three places to know. Baths, so you can call out a sniper. Bathhouse, because it's one of the central points of attack. And point, pretty much. Well, that one's pretty self-explanatory. So, uh, the other side is basic is a direct mirror of the other side. So you've got like their tunnels here and dance floor, all that stuff, and uh, you'll have main over there and, uh, towards mid. That's pretty. I think that's all of them. I didn't wasn't too specific, I suppose, but but yeah. Uh, there's a pretty minor one. Uh, I don't think you mentioned it, but it's just the little medium oh, health yeah. packs that are in here. These are just called health pack on either side. There's one on the other side too, over there. But uh, yeah, it's just called health pack. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for callouts. Um, as Yip Yapper said, it's there's really only a few that are really essential. Um, I know that Obelisk is a very popular heavy and sniper spot, so, or mainly a heavy spot, so it's always good to know where that is. So, uh, as for rolling out on this map, there's a bunch of different ways you can go, actually, um, depending on how you want to play the mid. Um, I think the most popular one is with your flank through bathhouse, so if you want to just go ahead and go over that one, Yip Yapper. Uh, sure. Oh, yeah. This is a pretty common one. This is one that I almost always do, and I usually go one of two ways once I get to the point, or once I get to like where I want to go, uh, depending on what your team is doing. So this is obviously different for every team because like some different teams can have different ones. But if you want a basic strategy, then I think I just like very briefly. Um, 
if you want a basic strategy, you go up here through tunnels. Wait, do you, do you talk about building stuff, I suppose? Yeah, you're probably going to want to build a telly right here, which will lose you 50 ammo. But don't worry, because if you want to build a second telly, this is up to you where you want to build your telly. But if you want a quick telly, you can put one right here, and then you'll have 100 ammo. Take that, and you've got 200 right off the mid. But you'll be slightly slower uh, to placing your sentry, which is kind of crucial. Uh, otherwise, you, sh you should uh, probably go right to making them anywhere you want to go. So once you're up in, up in here, it depends on what your flank wants and your team wants to do. So if your soldier and scout or whatever happens with your flank, if they decide to do something else and you still want to go ruins, like if they play on point or soldier jumps really quickly, then your best bet is to not go into bathhouse because playing alone as an engineer anywhere is already bad enough. But like uh, Bathhouse is extremely strong if a soldier walks in. So if you're like right here around the pack and a soldier walks in over there, you can get easily like you can easily get cut off and die fairly quickly, and buildings will be destroyed really quickly without help. That being said, if you're over here and you are alone, this is a pretty decent. Sp then there are a couple of different spots you can do. Uh, you can use a mini for. You can put one right at the door here if you want to control Bathhouse a little bit. Although it won't cover point. You can wrangle to bathhouse to kind of ward people off and stop them from attempting to get into bathhouse. But it's kind of dangerous because there's often a sniper over in their ruins towards the mid and he can snipe you fairly easily if uh, he gets a decent sight line and you can't really shoot him from this range. Uh, but my favorite is putting one right on the left side of this ramp here. Because if you put one right here, if you choose to use the wrangler you can use that too, but uh, if you put it right here around the middle of the ramp somewhere close, and uh, you can wrangle point here. You only see the left side, but it's uh, but that's not the only benefit of this mini because it does see point quite well and stops like a scout from getting too far into your demo without taking a severe amount of damage, and it stops your their scout from getting here without um, getting a good sight line on the gun. So if he tries to like strafe a corner to try and shoot the gun, he's not going to do very much damage, if, even if he's just like barely splitting it. So it takes him quite some time. Since, a, since the hitbox is like so far away that not every pellet's going to hit. So this is pretty decent for just holding the flank kind of thing, holding the right side for a bit, which uh, I guess I'll cover later because Lakeside's not the f heaviest flank map, at least for Engineer. So that's a spot that you're going to want to remember because that's actually a really good spot. If you want to build a dispenser immediately, a couple good spots. The most common spot is easily behind Obelisk because people like to withdraw like a demo or a heavy, withdraw behind point and use it. But you should be warned that, um, I'll, co I'll cover the next roll I'm just like saying if you're about to build a dispenser. Um, if you build a dispenser here, it's going to die a lot more often than not because a lot of people like to spam here or if the demo spamming from here, then if he shoots a sticky right here, it's going to destroy your dispenser. And if people come over to Obelisk, they'll get hit too. But you could also put a dispenser here. It's a little more out of the way on the left side, but it's uh, still useful and probably die less. And you can also put one over here, and it will also die less. It's not really a good idea to put a dispenser over here because most of your combo and your team can't really use it, but your flank can. But you're pretty much guaranteed that it's not going to die very often. My two suggested spots are putting one there and there, at least unless you want to just build a really quick dispenser if somebody needs to, because a heavy loves dispensers right there because he can still uh, play the point pretty well but yeah that's that's mostly what you can do on if you're going ruins it's just pretty much either hold the flank around here or put your center here if you want to wrangle point a little better but you're gonna have a bad sniper, sniper sight line or put one here to control bathos a little better um so some flanks usually just like to i know that some flanks usually just come into bathhouse and try to create as much space as possible just sort of flush out the enemy flank before they can get in so uh should they decide to do that would you push into would you still push into bathhouse uh, and perhaps risk dying to the sniper or would you stay uh more passive here on bats sorry i guess i forgot that part since uh i'd mentioned there was two things you could do either the passive or and the more aggressive one um I was going to mention this later, but I guess I'll just mention it now. Like I said, Lakeside is not all that heavy for you to be flanking this engineer. So even if your team is playing aggressive, then there are a couple of things you can do in the bathhouse. It, you can definitely help a lot in bathhouse, 
especially if your soldier and scout do a lot of work here because they're going to get here before you for sure but uh if they already look like they're winning the battle in bathhouse it's not a good idea to put it over here because this mini isn't going to do anything they're already gone uh, what you can do is with your soldier or scout or just a soldier whatever your flank is you can put one really aggressively here which if you build it quick enough uh, then you can either wrangle it and spam people away from main and support your combo a lot and hopefully maybe your soldier will help you too or you can uh, start to put one in some really interesting spots right off of the mid like right here i think one of these is buildable i think one of these spots is buildable is it uh i don't think so actually yeah i usually put mine oh, oh here we go i usually put mine just right here because i don't go for fancy stuff but for the most but like i figured hopefully oh it is buildable up there uh, right up here. Okay. But I don't really see... Yeah, that's, can... that doesn't actually see much. So yeah, I usually put mine here. I was just hoping that something like up there would work. Because I don't I don't like to waste the like two or three seconds getting up here. So even if it was built cool. Anyway, so right here, it'll stop a scout or something from pushing into your flank again. Uh, if you want it to be that aggressive. And it stops pretty much anybody that's not explosive for a while. But you should only do this if you've got someone with you. Because... If you, this is for any point, like even if uh, you already have the point or you don't have the point or whatever, because if they walk in, destroy your gun, you have to exit that way or fight them. They can just go this way, take the pack and fight you. And uh, if it's a scout, you probably get mulched. So it's not a good idea to be playing with, like, just play playing with your mini alone in the bathhouse. My personal favorite, if you're playing aggressively, is to just put it here, or if somehow your point is getting. If you're winning really hard, putting them right here. Because this one has a huge sight line where you can wrangle all the way to the left or main or anything like that. Only downside of that is uh, your point is pretty much already being won if you're putting your mini there in the first place. So if you're looking to push with them with your flank, you're, the odds that you're going to want to do that are kind of low because pushing in general, not just on the mid, for engineer is a lot trickier this is a huge open space the flank routes are very slim without going right to their spawn so having so many ways unless you're with other people then it's potentially possible but for the most part you're really slowing them down so i wouldn't suggest playing too aggressively like all the way up here without someone else so you probably might have seen like Asheville or something where it is a huge flank heavy map and those have flanks everywhere. You have ways to get in through lobby, you have ways to get into ramp, and it's not even close to their spot. You can still kind of like just mulch around. If you take one of the only flank routes in the, on the map, you go right to their spawn. So that's like, you don't really have that much of a flank route unless you're going right to their spawn, which uh, it's not a great idea if you're a hit scan. But uh, anyway, if you are playing incredibly aggressively with your flank, you have like a soldier with you, this isn't a bad spot to put a mini either because it allows you to, uh, on a mid, to have kind of a pinch. So if your demo is fighting on point, or if it's like even on point, or something like that, then you have your flank up here uh, attacking at the same time as a combo. But this is only in the case that your flank actually does overwhelm their flank, which is uh, obviously tenuous at best. But in that situation, this is not a bad spot to be. I wouldn't really try much else other than those few spots that I mentioned. Uh, for at least for the ruins rollout. <laughs> so, is that? Do you think that's good enough? Um. Yeah, actually, I think that's pretty good. Um, I do know that some players like to roll out main and put their mini sentry kind of far back here, but oh, that's I thought we were generally... just talking about the ruins one. I've, uh, there, no, 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 there isn't no, no, much. Uh, mm. I mean, yeah, that's like probably going to be the most effective rollout in general, just mm. because of how much you can accomplish. No, like, no, no. I thought you meant like. The that we were going to do like each rollout separately. Although the other ones don't really have much difference, so I wouldn't really uh, oh, yeah. cover very much on it. But if it's like, if you yeah, mean like true. playing with the combo, then that's definitely something um, something I was going to mention as well. Because uh, yeah, uh, yeah. the thing with Lakeside is, even though I said it's not an incredibly aggressive engineer map, it's not a map that you want to like flank all the time, except like rarely if you want to flank with your other with the rest of your flank, even though you'll be slowing them down. It's more of a, I'm going to plug whatever holes are missing in our team kind of thing. So 
if you see that their flank is pushing you all the time or they have a hyper aggressive flank then you're going to want to do some ruins roll as you're going to want to do some holding here if you have the point and you're just going to want to come around protecting your combo around there if you're uh or like wherever your combo is when you're uh preparing to attack or whatever uh but that's not the only hole that can be plugged though so let's say their flank isn't very aggressive and they play point so this is actually something that happened against us against jammers because we got 4-0'd because of this uh, mistake but uh i they had a super aggressive scout blobly i played on the team and i was basically shutting him down from entering ruins and because that's what he would do against other teams he would go into ruins and then just uh, flank us to shit so i'd stop him completely from entering ruins but there was another huge problem he just simply played point to demolished everybody else so that's uh, another thing that you can plug is uh, playing with your combo which would be either which would be both focusing on keeping your dispenser up for their for your heavy and keeping minis around your combo which again one of the best spaces to do that when you're holding is right here because it can cover point uh, but a few other good spots if you're playing incredibly aggressively with your combo trying to help them out you can put minis around here and wrangle them if you wish but uh it basically just kind of helps your demo if a soldier or a scout kind of rushes in sort of thing your main purpose if you're playing with around the combo uh, especially on a mid is to make sure that their initial rushes aren't going to do that much so on a mid this is i would not suggest this any other time honestly but on a mid, it's not a bad idea to put a mini here or somewhere around main, maybe over here, because a soldier is going to jump 90% of the time on a, on a lakeside mid. So if you build it quickly enough through main, then the soldier will start to get caught uh, when their demo is trying to attack. And it's up to uh, how your team deals with him to see if it's uh, going to be effective or not. Um, other than that, uh, you should put a telly preferably somewhere there's a lot of spots that you can hide aggressively with a telly so you can um put a telly over here you could put one over here on health pack or up behind that on bats so that they're super close to the point and your combo can get there fast but it's not as covered by someone else but the thing about lakeside it's not a big map so teleporter isn't of the top importance but it's not going to die most of the time so it's not a bad idea to just put one down since uh it's not going to go down as often as it would on, say, by Dr. Asheville, where it will die 24-7. But yeah, that's... I wasn't saying that those are the only two things you can do, but it's but like those are the two major things that you'd be wanting to do to plug a hole. If your sniper is dying a lot, it's not a bad idea to have your NG hanging around here. Maybe put a mini on bats around here, but um, I've seen a lot of engineers actually do this. Put a sentry up here and then use this to wrangle point. But this is one of the worst spots to play in terms of getting shot by a sniper. Engineer's head is uh, easy to shoot, and you're getting you're getting seen completely by the two biggest sight lines that the sniper can hold, and he can play over there too, on the right. So it's uh, I would other people might suggest it. I wouldn't. If it works for you, go for it. But I would not suggest playing here with a mini like playing aggressively. If you want to defend your sniper then have him either play close to the combo or just like kind of play around him but just keep walking don't like play right there but yeah those are some of the holes that you can plug just by an engineer because you're a general like problem solver that was not intended to be a engineer joke but <laughs> mm. so um I know that generally when you have the point uh forward holding can be relatively strong like as a team just because uh, Sniper is just so huge on this map, uh, you kind of want to have to be able to be as aggressive as possible to prevent that Sniper from getting into some cheeky sightlines. So where would you advise positioning yourself if your whole team were to play forward? Uh, it highly depends on how aggressively your team is playing or what they're doing, because this isn't a very large map. So play, if you play too aggressive, you're at their spawn, pretty much. Uh, but if you play over, like, any more aggressive than say point around here or over in ruins then you're not going to have a very good time and things are going to get a lot harder because if you go let's let's say you're over in ruins and you decide to get a little more gutsy you go to tunnels here soldier jumps in this is a small space you're dead instant like there's no way um if you play here 
then that's their spawn right there. A sniper can spawn, a demo can spawn, and they're just going to rush you, and you're not actually going to get very much pressure out. Even if you have other players with you, then playing over here, it's just way too close to their spawn to be aggressive. But that being said, some of the other spots I mentioned, like a mini over here, if you want to control the left side, let's say uh, this is also pointing to when I said that the engineer plugs holes. Uh, if you have a mini here, then it helps your team out on the left. So let's say you have a scout over here uh, or a soldier up there or whatever. I don't, I don't know what your team will do. Then this, this will basically help them out. So if they need to get away, people start getting aggressive, then it helps them out and you can wrangle it all the way through left. And uh, yeah. If you notice that your combo only has like maybe a demo and a heavy, or it's just a demo and it's kind of sort of alone, and you see a lot of combo, then you can play a mini here, and you've got some decent sight lines for this Wrangler all over through mid. Gotta watch out right here though, because that sniper sight line is still completely visible. So as long as your team is relatively aggressive and kind of stops their sniper from getting too far forward, you should be relatively alright. But yeah, for the most part, it's pretty much just a supporting where you are. Uh, sometimes you'll have a flank up here, just like the mid. You can put a mini here. You can kind of play around here, watch for stuff going on. But yeah, for the most part, I personally would not suggest being very, being hyper aggressive. You can be aggressive with your, but you need to play with your team because this is not a flank, this is not a flank heavy map for engineer at least. Even though Ash, something like Asheville is, it's base, it's kind of like, I don't want to say the opposite of Asheville, but it's a very different feel from Asheville, even if they're both cons. Mm -hmm. It's a very support-oriented map, in my opinion, if that if that kind of makes sense. So rather, instead of trying to create, instead of trying to create space, you're sort of trying to maintain space. Yeah, like, pretty much, because okay. there's it's all open. You are a, you are an engineer. You are slow. You are uh, you are weaker than other classes. Potential problem most of the time. It's, I'm not getting in that debate. Um, and all these open sight lines just make are not good for uh, are not good for like snipers or demos or anything like that that might bite you. And even if in, even in the few closed spaces are so closed that something like a soldier just demolish you. So I would not suggest do playing incredibly aggressive and playing on your own. So. So. Uh... In the event that, let's say, your team is starting to get pushed back pretty hard, like, you know, you, you lose the point, your flank's been killed or something, or they've just been sort of forced all the way back behind the point and to bats or something, uh, what can you do to make the most out of those sort of situations? Um, As in, so you've already lost point and you're not, like, you're kind yeah. of, like, focusing on rebushing sort of thing? Mm-hmm. Like, just sort of uh, regaining your the ground that you've lost? Um, one of the biggest things I've seen is that... Uh, on lakeside, this is incredibly important. This is another kind of maintain thing. You need to maintain your sniper, your sniper's sight lines, because this lakeside is a huge sniper map. It's fantastic, especially on bats and ruins. So wherever your sniper is, that should be your top priority. Uh, if you're planning, to, if you're preparing to push, because your medic, if he's like preparing to use his maneuver, he's going to have people around him. An engineer does not need to help him too much in that case. Uh, but a sniper usually likes to play alone a lot of the time. And an engineer can kind of protect him and give your give your team an opening to to uh, to take the point. So if a, if you're pushing with a sniper here on ramp, then he likes to play here. Maybe have an engineer maybe put a mini here, or if their sniper you don't know where he is, and kind of uh, play it down here so that nobody flanks or anything like that, and just kind of. See for yourself, like where your sniper is, and just help him out. That's that should be your main priority, pretty much. I don't want to mention, like, it's too specific stuff because they're very situational. But uh, yeah, defend your sniper should be your top priority, preferably. So, what would you say? Uh, we, we usually ask this one in most of our map reviews. Um, what would you say is like a pretty big misconception that a lot of lower level engineers could potentially have about this map? Ooh, now that you brought that up, that actually reminded me of one of the biggest elements of this of this map is Bathhouse. I think you intentionally walked into Bathhouse, so I would point to it, so I would mention it. Sure, but, uh, yeah, I did do that intentionally. But Bathhouse is a really weird beast, because Bathhouse, for all the times people say it's important, it's not the point. If you 
have a combo here, or if you play here, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. You can use it to support players, but it can also be shut down fairly quickly by a flank walking, like walking in or something like that. But it is also useful for supporting the point if you get the uh, opportunity. That being said, you can also get it. The sniper can see you pretty well from the left side, a demo can easily spam you out, and a flank coming over here to the right is going to shut you down, pincer you, and you're going to die. So it all depends on what your team is, but uh, one of the biggest mis misconceptions about en about uh, playing Engineer on Lakeside, I think, is the importance of Bathhouse. I also know a lot of players that will be like, yo, why isn't our Engineer like defending Bathhouse or something like that? That's uh, If that's happening, then sure, playing Bathhouse isn't a bad idea, but playing it alone is not a good idea. So uh, the importance of Bathhouse should only be stated if it's, uh, if it's a problem. If their team never uses Bathhouse ever, never pushes it at all, you're, you are useless. You are defending a place that is Bathhouse that is never used. Uh, and even if you play aggressively, then there's so many people here because they're not defending Bathhouse that you're going to die quickly. So if they don't contest Bathhouse at all so they can get pressure out, then don't concern yourself too much with it at all. That's kind of why I like putting a mini over here on ramp because it defends them from attacking through Bathhouse. So you kind of defend something that is more important, Ruins, because it's one of the flank routes for your sniper, and defending your sniper is one of the biggest key moments. That being said, it's not a terrible idea uh, to control Bathhouse, because Bathhouse can be a useful tool, but I still think there's a huge misconception about taking Bathhouse for a lot of people. You should realize, again, this is not the point. You cannot take point from Bathhouse. So this small door frame that's your only way of getting to point without having to go all the way around. So let's say your combo's in Bathhouse, your engineer's in Bathhouse, whatever. He can't get to point, and if he can't get to point without getting spammed by stickies or something like that, then your control in Bathhouse isn't really doing much. So it depends on what your team wants and what their team is doing. But uh, but yeah, you shouldn't prioritize Bathhouse in all situations. you got to gauge the situation. Uh, another thing I want to bring up uh, while we're on the topic of lower level engineers is sometimes uh on maps that aren't necessarily that aren't payload uh they'll opt to run level threes instead of mini sentries uh and on some maps that can work if you want to totally cheese something but as for what would you say uh as far as lakeside goes like could it be useful uh ever or would it be best to just stick with mini sentries full time um on most maps i would say level threes have their place i honestly this is not just because I love minis, but I honestly think there should be almost no place for level 3 in uh, on Lakeside. Because the one spot that it's super useful in would be putting um, putting one right here. Because you have a strong high health thing that can spam over here and here. All that stuff. But Lakeside is an incredibly strong sniper map. And if you build a gun here, that sniper is going to be gunning for you so fast. And you won't be able to do anything unless you get out of sight line get sniped by him because you have nothing really to stop him. If he's playing over there, he can play in such a way that there's no way you can shoot him. If you shoot a bunch of rockets, he crouches, no damage. So I honestly think that uh, movement is a lot more important than have being stationary on Lakeside. It's a very it's a very moving map, not just for combo, but for other people. Because you gotta like if you see their bathhouse is being is an important point and you need to take it, you need to be fluid and move there quickly. Or if you see like left side is being contested, you need to move there fluid, fluidly. So, like movement, in my opinion, is much is much better than that. Even if you're a DM, you don't think your DM is very good, can't use the shotgun. It's still super useful to be able to be fluid, create a mini super quick, and instantly have some maintenance for your team, which allows you to move as fast as possible to defend. Like let's say a sniper rotating, or you can use it to, uh, yeah, pretty much movement is like super important for. Me. That's just me, though. If people really want to build a level 3, though, I would suggest this being the only spot, because it covers a lot of ground. And it can kind of help your combo if they're playing far forward. But even an aggressive team, like, even if your team is really aggressive, a sniper can still get up there onto uh, onto bats without being contested too hard, as long as he has, like, one person with him. So it's very, very tenuous. All right. 
Well, I think that just about covers pretty much everything that's like a quintessential or anything that's important regarding NG on this map. Were there any questions in chat, Mothership? Uh, the only one I have, this is from Fallen, I think it probably is pertinent. Uh, he asked, is what happens if they all go bathhouse? So my assumption is like if the entire combo and flank and everyone just kind of goes through bathhouse to try and flood out through there, what should you do? Uh, if you have everybody, if, if their entire team is doing like a nine man through bathhouse, that kind of leads into what I was saying about being fluid and being like having movement. Because when I was saying stuff about, oh, you see a few people in bathhouse, you need to be fluid and control it. You see all of them and like there are explosive classes there, this many here. Even if you put one here, like passively, or put one wherever on the right side, it's going to be blown up so fast and you're going to die. So your top priority should be rotating over here or wherever your combo is and either helping them basically 9v9 or you give or you try and get the most ground possible and uh, start getting cap time. I guess that is one thing I didn't mention is getting getting cap time is pretty important. But uh, and on engineer, you. Uh, as long as their demo is not spamming too hard, you can get a little bit of cap time. But you should kite to the left, build a mini here, and kind of defend your left side so that your combo can focus on the people rushing them. So wherever their combo is, you shouldn't be pretty much because combo on this map is a little stronger than other maps. Uh, are there any other like informa any other information you might want to add that you think you may have missed out? Um, I'm pretty sure you touched on pretty much everything that needed that uh, needed to be touched on, um, but uh, maybe anything like loadout related or just like I don't know anything in particular that you feel like uh, could be thrown in as just extra knowledge. Um, this loadouts, I guess that's pretty simple. Most people like. A Wrangler can be pretty useful in a lot of cases, but uh, obviously that's the usual debate. There's nothing really different about this map than you can do uh, your old pistol Wrangler debate or whatever, because a lot of people do like the pistol, a lot of people like the Wrangler, it's all personal preference, and this map is no different. But uh, I don't think I have anything extra to say, but I just want to really just make sure that it like, drives the point home, that this is a that this is probably the only cost, that getting aggressive is just not the best idea in the world, because... There's just so, like I mentioned before, there's just so much open space, and if you're in, and if you're not in open space, you're in super tight corridors, and you'll get destroyed by explosive class instantly. And uh, it's super important to defend your sniper. Defending your sniper is pretty major. Hopefully, he plays closer to you than, uh, but you should recognize that snipers like to do their own thing, so you should probably be following him around. And uh, I guess the last thing that's important is don't. Over, like I said, don't concern yourself too hard with bathhouse. It's important, it's cool, but it can also be completely useless. And uh, you're kind of a sitting duck, doing nothing here. And eventually, somebody's gonna be like, "Hey, there's a lone engineer in here, or there's like a scout and engineer. Let's kill them. They're trying to defend bathhouse alone." Um, I guess one other piece of info is uh, I I'm only saying this because K and D did it. And it's like whatever. But uh, it al always depends on the team. But putting a, an engineer and a soldier in bathhouse and kind of just keeping them control isn't a bad idea. They had Etni and Ender control this the entire time, and it was uh, is pretty effective because the other teams would always try and do some damage on bathhouse. But having a soldier up here spamming here and an engineer stopping someone from uh, like a scout or something from rushing at the soldier, it's not the worst idea in the world. But if their team does not focus on bathhouse and you can't use it as effectively as you would be somewhere else, then don't concern yourself with it. It's not important. All right, that's great. All say. Sweet. So uh, I think that just about concludes our review or overview of Lakeside. Thank you for joining us, Yippiapper. No problem. I'm uh, sorry that I it took a month. I think I was initial. I think the initial plan was to do it like mid April or something. Oh, and yeah. Um, it's okay. I still think the timing is good, though, considering uh, Lakeside is next week. But uh, nevertheless, thanks for uh, coming out and watching, uh, and uh, we'll see you next week for... Uh, actually, I think we already got next week done. Gullywash. So, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>